Howdy folks, and welcome to another episode of Skinny Reads, the show for lovers of literature who hate to read, where we only talk about books that you can read in one or two or maybe three sittings. This book, today's book, is called Innocents, Legende, by Guillaume Matthias Cavelti, or Guillaume Matthias Cavelti, I'm not exactly sure. At first, a few words about the author. The author is born in the 70s in Switzerland. That's why I'm also not sure about the pronunciation of his name, as there are lots of French people, French speaking people, and French names in Switzerland. Um, he already published quite a few books, some mostly in shorter form, novellas and shorter prose works, even in Germany's renowned publishing house Zurkamp. But this one, his newest one, published in 2020, is released, uh, published by Lecto Books, which is a Swiss publishing house. Um, at first, before I tell you a few things about the plot, let's look at the cover. What we see is a nun holding a book with eyes. The nun doesn't have eyes. She was blinded, but she has a halo. Why do I focus on the cover? It's important plot-wise, and as you can see here, it's done by Adrian Oxner after an idea by the author himself. So, the author took part in the creation of this book cover. Anyway, what is the book about in the plot sense? It's about an inquisitor in medieval times called Innocence, which translates to the innocent one, I would say. It's <laughs> not so hard to translate this one. Actually, anyway, Innocence is an inquisitor. The Pope calls him, Innocence goes to the Pope, the Pope tells him in Schwamendingen, which is a village in Switzerland, quite close to Zurich nowadays, I think nowadays it's even part of Zurich, um, in Schwamendingen there is a weird sect that has the skull of the first human being ever, which might be Adam, but I'm not sure, <laughs> and it's also not explicitly mentioned in this text. Anyway, they got the skull. Dear Innocence, can you go there and stop them from doing their weird rituals and so on? Innocence says yes. But he has a rope, and in this rope he finds a book. The book went into the rope by itself. The book is pure white, doesn't have anything written in it, and the book can communicate with Innocence, and this book is also the narrator of the book to us so and the book also approaches us and speaks to us as the reader the book knows that it's telling the story to us so quite for literary analysis quite an interesting disposition we have a book that's narrating a story to us as we read a book might it be that later on it turns out that we read the book that is telling the story maybe anyway the book and Innocence go to Schwamendingen. There, lots of weird things happen. They, they meet a wide array of weird characters. They meet weird astrologists who come there because there's a, an evil astrological um, constellation on the night sky called a star called Caput Algol, Algol emitting evil energy. They meet two brothers called Tohu and Bohu, which collect reliquia like <clears throat> um <laughs> more or less objects from weird biblical stories that they exhibit panopticum style so you you have a <laughs> yeah a panopticum of biblical reliquiae they meet a weird tavern owner and his daughter in this tavern there's one particular scene that stuck to my mind the local preacher has a discussion with a demon in this tavern about human existence, about human life, and the preacher is way more pessimist than the demon, and he reduces us, especially you, dear listener, actually, he reduces quite a lot to the meat and the excrements that we emit. <laughs> so this preacher has a rather pessimist outlook on our existence, which he shouldn't have if he only was a good Christian. 
Um, yes, actually, pessimism might be a good starting point, a good a further good point to talk about, as the pessimism in this book is woven into the book quite often, but always a bit tongue in cheek. I think this author, he doesn't want to bring you down, he doesn't want to show you that life is meaningless and you should never reproduce or anything. It's more, he. it feels like, especially towards the end when there is a bit of destruction going on, um, that the author approaches pessimism in this book as a thought experiment, that he sets himself into the pessimist mindset and then continues to look at the world at, at, and at his novel through this pessimist lens and l sees where it will lead him. So it's more of a, a fun experiment, actually, than an authentic pamphlet of pessimism. Like, you read this and afterwards you don't think, oh boy, I only consist of shit and meat. <laughs> um, yes, I, I, I like this quite a bit. And he really, you can... The book oozes joy when it comes to writing of dark things. It's really funny and he does it in, a, in an almost loving way, which I really liked. One more thing about the book that might be worth mentioning is it has lots of chapters and they're all really, really short, as you can see. But having this book play or set in the medieval times brings with it that he, he speaks uh, he writes about lots of rituals and object everyday objects that people use that we forgot today that they ever existed so it has quite a lot of interesting vocabularies this book it might, might be a bit of a weird thing to say but it's quite a colorful read as you get to read lots of weird words that you don't come across that often and even especially that the uh, <clears throat> the chapters are so short, it feels like you're reading, <laughs> like you're eating a box of chocolates where you really want to enjoy every short chocolate because it has its own taste, its own <clears throat> recipe behind it. And that's how it feels with this book, to, uh, reading this book. Um, there's one interesting paragraph for further analysis where the book that's narrating the whole plot is talking about literature and he basically says that all literature is just a listing of things it's also <laughs> a bit of a, a pessimist outlook on literature i think it was chapter 35 look at how well i'm prepared for this thing yes a terrible listing don't you think my reader well which listing isn't but think, everything that follows on the first letter is listing. Every single book consists of nothing but lists. This is everything that we be books can do, being cemeteries. Every letter is a gravestone, a lifeless promise, a lie right from the beginning. Whoa, I'm quite good at impromptu translating. Don't... And I. <laughs> yes, so this might be uh, yes this is a bit of a uh ha, see this you praise yourself and then you're out of your of your speaking flow um no the book that's the narrator thinks that every literature is listing and that's why you find lots of lists in this book which is i think an interesting thing to to do <clears throat> in your novel but it's still quite a fun read it's not that you only read lists the lists are interesting there's a list of of cool demons that live in this in this town with cool um, descriptions. I think some of them are stolen, in stolen <laughs> from yokai from Japanese yokai designs. Uh, yes, another thing I really liked about this book is the sum of allusions to pop culture and maybe also horror culture. You you get lots of allusions to H.P. Lovecraft to Dario Argento movies, to metal bands. There's a Count Akakoke in this book. Akakoke is a British black metal band. You get 
allusions to the name of the rose, which is quite an important text for this one, I think. There's also a house in this uh, in this book that's modeled after the house, the calendar architecture house of the name of the rose. Um, yes, and just like the name of the rose by Umberto Eco, I think this one is also uh, <clears throat> postmodern historical novel. This one, a postmodern historical horror novel, I would say, which is fantastic for me. I really enjoy postmodern literature. I really enjoy horror literature with a literary approach, and this is a thing that you don't really find often doing uh, done by German writers. Actually, I think you don't find it at all. You find, <clears throat> like, I mean, a German writing light writers, I know he's a Swiss guy. Um, yes, for all these reasons, if you like what you just heard and you think, hey, this is cool and I want to read it and I also want to read similar things to this, I might recommend you to read some Thomas Ligotti, who's <clears throat> quite a big name in today's horror writer landscape. He also has quite a pessimist approach to it, but maybe also with a bit of humor glaring through at times, but not as much as Mr. Cavelti, I would say. Another thing you might enjoy, or another thing this book <laughs> is similar to, is in, in its... Uh, in its plot design that there's an inquisitor going into a city where he doesn't know what to expect. Another book is Shadow of the Torturer, the first book of the four books of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, where a torturer gets expelled from his guild and sent out into the whole wide world not knowing what to expect. This one is taking place in a far future that is so far in the future that there already happened a sort of a, a pop apocalypse and this time, the time this book plays in resembles medieval times, blah blah blah. Anyway, if you like this one, you might also enjoy this one and if you think this one sounds interesting, you might also want to try out this one. From the German literature canon, and the last allusion I would do is The Elixir des Teufels by E.T.A. Hoffmann about a monk going crazy after drinking the elixirs of the devil. So you also have a, a holy figure going berserk. This might be a bit of a spoiler here, but a few weird things happen to Mr. Innocence, who is oh so Christian in the beginning. This was the second in this novel and this review. Anyway, this one is a cool book as well. You also have some good reasons for media analysis in this book as the book is called the elixirs of the devil and the guy the the <clears throat> the protagonist is drinking the elixirs going crazy so why isn't reading the same thing as drinking <laughs> all this anyway you have cool reason to <laughs> analyze literature with this one as well now a bit of a sad reveal for some of you folks for some of you seven viewers of this video and this book so far is only available in German by the cool publishing house Lecture Books. But if you're an English-speaking publisher thinking, hey, this book sounds cool, I wonder if it might be successful in English-speaking English -speaking countries as well. I think it would be. There are lots of horror fans <clears throat> liking Ligotti or Gary J. Shipley and the Horror Writers Association and the Bram Stoker Award Group they often give out um, awards to books similar as this one. Maybe not books that, that play in the medieval times, but anyway, I think this is a, a good book for an English readership as well. So, <laughs> pardon my, my ramblings. This was my one of my first reviews. Actually, it was the first review, but I didn't want to, re to publish this as the first review. Anyway. Um, thank you. Guillaume Matthias Cavelti Innocence. I really liked it for the reasons I said. For the analysis you can do with it. Anyway, keep rocking and do 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 do.